Hello and welcome to another episode of The Living Philosophy. Today we're going to be talking about the three colours of masculinity. These are the three ages of man and the three phases that man must pass through. This is a, the classic configuration of red to white to black that we find Robert Bly exploring in his book about men, Iron John, which is an exploration of an old Brothers Grimm fairy tale of the same name. And the masculine ordering is separate from the, the feminine ordering as we find in the Snow White version of the I Want a Child that is as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as ebony. And so the, the female ordering goes from white to red to black, whereas the masculine ordering goes from red to white to black. So we're, we're all going to the same place, we're all heading towards black, but it's 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 the journey along the way that differs slightly. So we'll be exploring the, the women's ordering in another video next week, but this week I want to focus on those three colours and these three phases of a man's life what the different colours mean, what they symbolise, and why it's important that we go through each phase rather than just skipping to black. So that's what we're going to be exploring on today's episode of The Living Philosophy. This idea of the, the three phases, the three colours of, of the masculine life comes from the, the part of the Iron John story uh, after the battle where the, the prince has helped the king out and his identity is still unknown and so the king and the princess hold this competition where they, they throw an apple into the crowd of knights and every day the prince goes to the forest and he gets a, a different suit of armour and a different horse from the, the wild man Iron John and so the first day he shows up with a red horse, with a, with a chestnut horse and red armour, the second day he shows up in a white horse with, with white armour and the third day black horse, black armour and it's more or less the same pattern events he catches the apple he runs off he catches the apple he runs off and on the third day as the black knight he catches the apple but is chased by the, the the other knights and gets wounded along the way so it's a peculiar detail of the story and just robert Bly's exploration of it is is, is very interesting as these are these being the phases of masculinity and how red is the first phase and that is the the fullness of 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 that young impulsive man that that stereotypical thing of men as these risk taking impulsive kind of selfish creatures when they're young driven by the id energy driven by energy coming up from impulses from the underworld and this is men doing stupid shit so if in our modern culture where there's a there's a big kind of a tug of war over the the, the gender gap especially on the all focused really on, on the higher end and whether the, the gender pay gap has anything to do with uh, biological differences. But if you look at the number of incarcerations, the number of death penalties, the people who do stupid shit, it is by and large, there is no doubt that it's mostly men. So 98% of people on death row in America are men. 90% of the murders are committed by men. And of the Darwin Awards, which are awards that are given out every year for people who die in spectacularly stupid ways, uh, the 88.5% of those deaths are, are men. So 88.5% of the of the Darwin Awards. And like an example of one of these is there was two two Texan men, this is Drawbridge in Louisiana that went up to let the, the boats go through. And these Texan, these two Texan lads, they, they lifted up the, the barrier and they thought they'd gone it like Duke's Hazard. <laughs> so they drove up this bridge two o'clock in the morning and tried to try to drive over it and uh, they, did, they did not make it and so they got a Darwin award and it's it's that kind of stuff that like that just is it always seems to be more likely to be men you can also relate this to the to the, the fact that uh, men are twice as likely as women to die in car accidents I think it's uh, 71 percent to, to 29 percent so there's uh there's these there's these differences in terms of men doing stupid shit and you can kind of look at that as being related to the red knight energy so men being driven by this impulsive id kind of energy which leads us to more risk taking and from an evolutionary standpoint that kind of makes sense that evolution would be more liberal with the lives of men and would encourage men towards more risk taking because you only need really a, a small group of men to to pollinate a whole village whereas every woman is, is very important for the survival of the tribe so having men go out and engage in more audacious ridic ridiculous and, and heroic or stupid acts while hunting or while fighting uh, another another tribe it's you can see why why evolution would select for that because every now 
now and again the man will pull off this this amazing heroic action and you'll you'll lose a few men along the way so it makes sense that we'd have that disparity there that men would be more sacrificable on 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 an evolutionary level so it's this uh this energy of of the young man it's the the wild rebellious powerful energy and red is that instinctive kind of feeling of like deep passionate emotions and that really maps over with what we see with with young men and with this risk-taking dangerous kind of behavior so when a man is in red he's much more likely to be driven by his emotions by this uh, impulsive nature and more likely to take stupid risks or to just snap at the the drop of a hat so it's, it's this uh, more emotional fiery kind of character and that maps over with mars being the the, the color red the, the color of that kind of fiery energy and this isn't just uh, in in young men you can see this energy is, is what rules on wall street it's that kind of like selfish risk taking kind of behavior without really thinking about the consequences and kind of uh status and dick measuring going on there so i, I feel like the the, the red energy is, is well embodied in that in that stereotype of, of the wall street shark so that's the the red knight and that's the the first phase of a, of a man's life and then as he gets older he's supposed to move into the phase of the white knight and where the red knight is characterized as intensity the white knight is characterized as engagement and the white knight is the one that upholds the system this is the man who holds up the the status quo and who who does what needs to be done and the kind of a conservative upholder of society so whereas the red is the rebellious thing the white is the thing that it's rebelling against the white is the here's what you should do and white is much more driven by super ego whereas red is that id kind of energy so the white is like here's what we should do here's what we have to do and it's the the grinding things out and the work ethic and the morality and mores of a society so that's well, that's where the the white knight's energy kind of goes to and we can think about that in terms of the the idea of the white knight the, the stereotype of the white knight in our society the the noble knight who who sacrifices himself for others and who is out to be a kind of the the good hero rather than the red out to just do things for themselves so the thing with the red knight being driven by id being driven by those internal impulses it makes him unpredictable it makes him he's a hard man to to get a grasp on and to pin down and you don't quite know what he's going to do donald trump was very much that that embodiment of red energy and even his pr advisors they never knew really what he was going to say and he's just very unpredictable he himself didn't even know what he was going to say at, at certain times so there's that unpredictability of of red whereas white because it's that super ego thing we, we you know what to expect of a white you kind of whites are predictable and that's why they're such great bastions of the system they're great upholders of the system and the status quo because they they react in predictable ways to the the, the structure of society so the white knight is what culture and education is trying to create it's what it's trying to cultivate it's trying to take young men and and craft them into good citizens make them good members of society the trouble with that though is that we've become a little bit too good at it almost and now we're having a problem of of young men who have bypassed red and gone straight to white because the cultural messages tell us that here's here's what it is to be a good man you know be good do what's right and it's it's this education towards shunning those aggressive instincts of 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 masculinity that that flare up in red in such a unpredictable and, and violent kind of ways and so we we try and drive men towards white it's it's that idea of bypassing that red where all the crimes all the wildness all the violence kind of happens and we try and just bring men straight to white but we're starting to see that that's not the the correct approach really or if it's not you know there's there's good intention there and that is where we want our men to get to but there's a danger in bypassing passing and you can see this manifest in a few different ways in in very different things the MGTOW men going their own way and uh, the pickup movement so all of these are are almost I would say they're they're married in an enantiodromia with the white knight idea because the white knight without the red knight is it's all super ego all intention but without the powerful dynamism of the red knight and so what we see with these white knights is that stereotype of the nice guy of the of the guy who is perpetually in the friend zone of these women who are complaining to him about you know how men are assholes and she just wants a nice guy and then he's just like oh but i'm just here and it's 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 a common trope in our society and you see it all over these these kind of message boards with the the nice guys in the in the pickup artistry community and in the incel and the red pill movements and what happens with these white knights that have bypassed the red is that they don't have that instinctual thing which is which is attractive 
they they lack that actual magnetism they lack any real depth it's just their their views are just a mirror of of what the culture and what they feel like they should be doing rather than having their own inner kind of strength and self knowledge and so they're not attractive to those women and so the what what begins to happen is a as a disillusion begins to set in and these men begin to think less of women because they see women go into these these less adequate men these more asshole men and i think that this will map over as we'll see next week very nicely with the first phase of the of the women's three colors with the the white woman so this seems like the 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 white knight man trying to get a the white maiden, the white virgin, that first archetypal phase of, of a woman's development. So this disillusion sets in where they begin to start to think, oh, women are, they're, they're liars, they're disingenuous, they what, why, and, and it, it comes, it, and it stems from that lack of self-belief, that lack of any efficacy and not getting what they want. And so it's the, the man has, has, has a few choices at that point. Because if, if he keeps going, that bitterness and resentment will settle in. And he's, what he's seeing is that the world is not reacting the way it was, he was told it would react. So men are brought up with these positive cultural messages of be good and do right and, and good things will happen to you. And what he's finding is that actually the bad guys will get the girl rather than him, the nice guy getting the girl. And so the nice guy begins to sour there because this is his vision of the world. This idea of either assholes or nice guys. And it's, it's this false dichotomy. And then he ends up falling into the, into the hole and he comes to a crossroads and What's happening there is that the man, he's realizing that his white knightness is, is ineffectual. And so he needs to complete it with some red knight. He realizes he needs to go back down. He probably doesn't even realize. He probably just becomes sour. He probably just becomes suspicious and resentful of women. And so he ends up moving towards these red blooded movement, these movements of the red knight. And there, there are this, and there's this whole manosphere out there now of this pickup artistry and incels, the black pill, red pill, all these different ways of, of changing the perceptions about women, changing the perceptions about society and looking at it very suspiciously as if we've been given wrong messages, as if we've been brainwashed in the wrong direction, as if the world is set up so that only attractive men can get women and then the rest of the men are, are kind of doomed. And so what these movements do is they, they pick up that slack and they, they change men's perception about it. And these get demonized a lot and there are obviously bad traits about it, but it's the same as, as the young men in red who are doing risky behavior, who are engaging in violence, who are filled with anger. It's, it's that the, the red is wildness. It's id energy and it, it will always be cringy, but it is a necessary part of making a whole man of a man's development. And so what's, what's, what's difficult with this white knight returning to red is that he has to transgress society's mores. He has to transgress the morality and ethics of his society in order to go under, in order order to go back and complete that thing. And so it's very hard in many ways for a white knight to return to the red knight because of that energy being so looked down on and distanced from the, the from the popular morality. And then so we have the pickup community which has kind of runs the gamut from extremely misogynistic views of, of women and just plugging in lines to more just uh, cultivating authenticity and cultivating your own depth and your own taste. So there, there, are, there are opposite poles within the pickup community but it, it definitely, the goal there is to take these men who are stuck at white knight, who are stuck at nice guy and to give them that, that basis. It reminds me of something Jordan Peterson said in one of his lectures that we we need to go into chaos, we need to go into the darkness, into the uncomfortable places, but not all people come back from chaos. Not all people, some people get lost in there. And if you think of Dante's journey through, down through the levels of hell, it's, you can, you can get stuck in hell and not make a truth to purgatory in heaven that is beyond. And so that's kind of the scary thing there is that because we have no way of initiating those white knights into their, into their red knight nature, it's kind of taking, culture is just kind of taking its own route to finding that. And we're losing a lot of men into these incel and misogynistic side of, of this red pilling community. So we're losing a lot of men into that rather than being able to bring them up to the to the level of wholeness and to drive them on the way through a, a more a more whole manhood that integrates redness and whiteness and is moving towards blackness so yeah that's kind of the, the scary thing that i see going on in our culture is that the these pitfalls are getting are getting deeper and and it's again a part of the greater trend of the polarization of society so that's all quite scary so when i look at these incel movements and the pickup artistry movements i think that it's a necessary thing that we have in order to 
take these white knights and to bring them into red knights because the white knights cannot function the nice guy cannot really it's no way to continue to live it's no way that thing of being disconnected from instinct being disconnected from that inner deep masculine energy of of, of self-knowledge and of, of empowerment it's it's a necessary part of development to integrate that and these th- movements are spontaneous ways that we've developed and until we develop a better way until we come up with a more acceptable way of initiating men well this is this is what we've got this is the the collective unconscious's way of of creating these men of of creating this initiation so if you look at the positive side of the pickup artistry community i think it's amazing and i think that it's it's really good for young men and then if you look at the the darker sides then you're just seeing that the the greater the resentment the greater that that white knight energy built up the the darker and deeper the inanity Theodromia, the conversion into the opposite went because the nicest guy ends up becoming the most sour and rotten incel and it's it's that it's that snapping of the elastic band from one side to the other so i think it's 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 a necessary part of development and that's why those movements are out there and we can see similar trends as we'll be exploring next week going on in in the feminine bypassing of their white into the red so these are cultural trends that are going on as we've become very civilized and as we've been trying to educate people we can see where we want our young people to go and so we've pushed them that direction without appreciating the the necessity of development of working on those layers and that's what's going on with spiritual bypassing as well it's trying to skip to self-actualization without having sorted your your lower levels and it's it's the danger of of seeing the destination and wanting to get there but then crumbling along the way and so this is the danger of the bypassing but once we've got that red knight and once we've got that white knight then you come to the black knight and the black knight is just really interesting and there's that little part of the story in Iron John where the Black Knight gets chased by the other knights once he's caught the golden apple on the third day and he gets wounded and that is the the essence of the Black Knight the Black Knight is is the wounded knight and and I guess a good way of encapsulating the the ideology the the world view of the the Black Knight is is woundedness and it's captured in Rumi's formulation that the wound is the place where the light enters you or as Leonard Cohen puts it there is a crack a crack in everything that's how the light gets in so it's this idea of that our brokenness is is where we become whole and you see that a lot in, in Brene Brown's discoveries in researching the whole heart of people who are shame resistant. And it, it comes from an appreciation of woundedness, an appreciation that we are human, that we are not perfect and we will never be perfect. And I guess a celebration of our unwholeness. And the story that Robert Bly tells about the Black Knight is a story from Abraham Lincoln's presidency. And it's one night while he's in the White House during the war, a woman shows up at his door at five o'clock in the morning. How she got into the White House, God only knows how she got to his bedroom. But she comes to him and she says, listen, my son was sent here to serve a few nights ago and he had no sleep and then he was on the job and he fell asleep on the job. So he was guarding something and he's going to be executed tomorrow morning. And she said, please spare him. And the way Bly reads this, he says, as a red knight, Abraham Lincoln would have said, how the hell did this woman get here? He would have called the guards and we would have had her removed. The white knight would have said, listen, I can see, I can see what you're saying. I can see it's, it's a tough situation, but unfortunately my hands are bound by the rules. Um, these, these are the laws. And if I made an exception for you, I might have to make an exception for a hundred more people. So I'm very sorry. I empathize with your situation, but there's nothing I can do. My hands are, my hands are tied. But what Lincoln does is he says, well, I guess shooting him wouldn't have helped him much. And that's kind of the, there's a little bit of humor there in the Black Knight. But the important thing there is that that old saying that man is not made for the law, but law for man. And the White Knight is bound by law. He's, he's caged by tradition and the way society tells us the rules of the game, whereas the Black Knight is willing to break the rules. It's, it's not with the Red Knight's energy of fuck the rules and let's rebel and that kind of punk energy which pushes back but it's the black knight kind of goes well you know we'll do what we can we're somewhat bound but you know we can we can bend the rules and we can do what we can do to make the world a better place so if the the red knight is intensity and the white knight is engagement the black knight is humanity the black knight is not trying to seek perfection but accepting the imperfection of the world seeing that the wound is really what 
what what can heal the world and I guess it's it's that other I think it's a Jungian saying that uh, only the wounded physician can heal and I think the black knight can be mapped over onto that Jungian idea so Jung somewhere in his writings he says that if, if a young person comes to him then he will send them to Freud or Adler that they are that the work of psychoanalysis is when an individual is trying to rise to their peak and they meet barriers along the way like their past is holding them back and the the task of psychoanalysis in those cases is to remove those barriers in order to help you to reach your peak but with analytical psychology which is Jungian psychology what Jung is talking about is the the, the descent so the first half of our life is spent in the rise is sent in achieving the things in in the outer world but he says this aspect to life is reversed in the second half of life and we have an aspect towards death so it's coming to face our own mortality and he says that the task of psychology in that phase is helping a person to descend helping a person to fall out of the sky and meeting that without disintegrating and and just plummeting and so this is the the work of the black knight and you can you can see that color i guess in the in the blackness of death and it's developing an attitude towards that death it's developing a relationship with that and that's the darkening i guess is that it's no longer the the upward looking looking towards the sun looking towards life it's it's looking down towards death and this is where the humanity and the depth of the inner world comes with the black knight and maybe this is why plato says that we shouldn't study philosophy until we're 50 because you need to be ready you need to have that experience you can't take a young person and jump them to the black knight phase you need to go through the red knight you need to go through the white white knight so you need to kind of pay your dues you need to get to this point where you've experienced life where you've fulfilled those those deeper instincts and desires and then what we see happening with midlife crises is that the the gold that you've worked so hard to to get into your hands turns to ashes it turns to dust everything that you found meaningful up until that point everything that you sought all that status all that money it it begins to lose its meaning and you, you begin to look for more and this is where we see in the language of spiral dynamics people moving into from orange into green and in the stereotypical thing of people who have sought possession sought the, their fulfillment externally and then they come to a point where they realize oh it, money can't buy you happiness and so they begin the quest for happiness and fulfillment and that would be in the traditional growth that would have been in, the, in the, this this midlife inflection point but obviously our our development is is very skewed we're bypassing phases and our development is happening at, at so many different points so green is actually a, a much more common among young people now so god knows what young would say these days and so when you think of the black knight you can think of him as the first stage of alchemy the negredo the blackening and maybe that this is an inflection point and it's the beginning of the second half of a man's life and and the, the beginning of the inner work this is dante coming out of the forest in the middle of his life that's that's how the divine comedy begins he comes out of a forest in the middle of his life and there are wild animals about and it's the, the that break that break from everything you've known before and you're in darkness and then Virgil comes along his his psychopomp his guide and leads him down into hell and through hell he descends to the bottom and comes to purgatory into heaven so that's the that's the journey that goes beyond this 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 black knight perhaps and this inner development of the black knight in the traditional development of a human being is what would have made him so perfect as an elder so in in older times when the elders were appreciated you can see how every phase has meaning you've got the red knights who are the fighters the warriors going out on the hunt and then you've got the white knight who's the upholder of society who does the work who maintains the status quo and who maintains that order and tames the red knight and then you've got the black knight which is the the ripening of the tribe's wisdom so when you look at a culture as a whole you need all three phases you couldn't just have a a world of black knights because you know you it would be a completely different kind of society and it would because you need those white knights and those red knights to to the different things to make society work at all its different levels and to get all the different jobs done so it's it's really interesting interesting to see these three phases not as one prescription as oh everyone should be black really but it's that you got to live the phase of your life that you're at and this is what we see with Maslow it's what we see with it's what we see with spiral dynamics that everyone has to go through these different phases of development you can't skip development you have to go through and so I feel like this is a very important map for masculinity for men coming into their fullness is, is to realize what part of the journey am I at am I at the white knight am I at the red knight am I at the black knight and what do I need to do to move forward am I whole am I completing things so it's it's 
a very good little uh, snippet of that story out of Iron John, which is a book I'd highly recommend, which gives a good insight into the development of, of manhood and the, the completion and the wholeness of manhood. And there's there's so much in, in the book Iron John that is, is just, it's, just it's, a, it's a minefield of, of great insights. First Jungian book that I really read and it just, it was the first, it blew my mind and it just really uh, set me off on this, down this deep rabbit hole of, of, of Jungian and depth psychology kind of readings. So I'd highly recommend the book and uh, yeah that's uh, everything that I wanted to cover in today's episode of The Living Philosophy hope you've enjoyed it if you have please uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, give us a like down below and yeah if you have any comments thoughts feedback insight uh, I'd love to hear from you down below and yeah otherwise I shall see you next time guys thanks for watching